Okay, so on first sight of the dummy, um, we're very glad to see the nice diamonds. Uh, this hand looks like it's going to sort of play itself in the sense of in no trumps you want to look at your long suit and look at trying establishing tricks. Um, but our tricks have kind of been given to us really, given that the diamonds and spades are so robust. We've got five diamond tricks, even if the diamonds are breaking four and nil, we can play ace, king, queen, jack and get rid of the ten. So we're going to make five diamond tricks come what may. We've got three spade tricks, the ace, king, queen, so that's eight tricks in total. We've got two heart tricks, which is ten tricks in total. And then that's probably where our, our tricks are going to come to an end. We might be able to make a club trick, but by the time we do that, and if we were to play clubs, we might actually lose the entire club suit. It's possible if we play a club to the queen that gets squashed, a club to the jack gets squashed, and they might then be able to win loads of clubs. So whilst we might make an extra club trick, we don't want to lead them ourselves. So I think the correct approach is just basically going to be to run for home. I know that's pretty boring, um, and we might be able to make an 11th trick out of the clubs if we were to give the lead away, but it, it's unlikely and it's risky. If we, lead, if we lead clubs twice and the opponents squash our clubs, we might actually go off in this contract. So I think it's going to be a, a rather routine, boring 10 tricks here. Five diamonds, three spades, and two hearts. There is a slight chance of an 11th trick if the jack of spades drops. If we play ace, king, queen of spades, the jack could appear, which makes our 10 a winner. But that's not particularly very likely. It would need the jack singleton, doubleton, or trebleton, um, which isn't statistically very likely. Definitely less than 50%. So we could try that, because it doesn't cost us anything, but it's unlikely to happen. So I think it's going to be a normal 10 tricks, maybe 11 if we get lucky in the spades. So for this one, I'm obviously going to play low and wait to see what east plays. So East contributes the Queen, third hand highest. We could duck this heart, but then that kind of blocks the hearts a little bit. If we duck, we're going to win the King on the next round, then that leaves our Ace over there a bit stranded. According to the rule of seven, you should duck, because you've got three opposite two, away from five suggests you should duck twice. But given that we've just got ten tricks on top, there isn't really much point in ducking, and it does give us this blockage problem, because our King will be left singleton after a duck. So, I would just win the heart. We've not really got anything to worry about in this hand. So, we take the first heart trick. We could try and be cute and try and play a club and give the lead away and see what the opponents do. If we play a club, we're just opening ourselves up to risk and they're just going to play hearts back anyway. So, it doesn't actually benefit us. So, I would just simply cash the, cash the suit out. Playing, uh, playing diamonds, nothing particularly interesting about the play. But sometimes 3 no trumps is this way. Especially the case... When you have extra points, you've got a surplus of points, you often find you can just run for home. Doesn't matter which order particularly. Play a low diamond to the queen. Slightly good practice to get the queen out of the way because they're longer. And then we play another diamond. I'm going to play the nine just to get it out of my hand so I don't block them. This hand's going to throw something away. All they need to do is hold on to jack to four spades. This fifth spade can go, but they can't throw two spades because that then leaves the jack vulnerable to the ace, king, and queen. So I'd throw a spade for now. Goes to the king or jack. They're going to throw something away. Doesn't really matter what they throw. Heart, a club, or a spade. Any of those are good. Probably a spade because they're disinteresting. I would start to get slightly interested now in this ten of spades. I think, oh, I've just seen two spades go. There's a possibility this ten of spades is going to be a winner. So we play the jack of diamonds. They throw something else away, let's say a small club. We follow suit. This hand must not throw another spade. They need to hold on to jack to four. So they need to let go of something. They don't really want to let go of a club, so they've got to let go of a heart. It's uncomfortable for them, but it's what they've got to do. And then we play our final winning diamond. This hand throws away again, probably another club. Could be a heart, though, or a spade, just as long as they hold on to their ace, ten of clubs, pretty much. We need to throw something away. I wouldn't throw the ten of spades away because that could become a trick. I wouldn't throw the heart away because that allows us to get to the ace. So I'd throw a little club away. It doesn't really matter the clubs because we're not really going to play them anyway. Now this hand comes under some pressure on this diamond because they don't want to throw a club in case their king gets squashed by our ace, if indeed we had the ace. They don't want to throw a spade because they want to keep hold of jack to four. They know we've got spades from the bidding. So they have to let go of a heart, which means their jack's going to get squashed by the ace. It's the only chance they've really got in hoping that their partner has the ten of hearts covered. You could make the argument, well, why not throw a club and hope their partner's got the ace of clubs? It's more likely their partner has the ten of hearts than the ace of clubs based on the bidding. So I would let go of a heart. I'm not happy about it, but it's what you've got to do. 
and that is the correct defence because that doesn't give us anything, it doesn't give any freebies. Throwing a spade is definitely fatal. Now you can test the spades. There's a spade, spade, ace, king or queen, and so on. We're now going to rattle our three top spades in the hope we see the jack of spades fall. We've seen two discards, but unfortunately for us, on the second round of spades, this hand discards something. That's the head club. So we now know this ten of spades is not going to mature as a winner because our left-hand opponent, West, has got the jack and another spade. Unfortunately for us, that is pretty much the handover now with regards to interest of any extras. We've currently got eight tricks. We've got a ninth trick in the shape of the ace of hearts, and we've got a tenth trick in the shape of the queen of spades, but the ten of spades will not be a winner. Worth a try, just in case you've miscounted. You never know, the jack might appear, um, but it doesn't because we counted correctly. This hand throws something away, and we now know we've only got the ace of hearts coming. I wouldn't give the lead away with a club trying to make an extra trick, because they might just go club, 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 club. So, take our ace of hearts, give them the last three. We're making the ten tricks we anticipated at trick one. Nothing went well with regards to extra tricks. So we take the ace of hearts, and then the defenders can have the rest. They've got the ace king of clubs, and they've got the winning ten of hearts, or the winning jack of spades, whichever one they want. So we make ten in total, just losing the last three.